Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage, and welcome to a brand new series of Sid Meier's Civilization 5, where I will be attempting the single city challenge playing as Venice. Now just a little quick piece of exposition before I start. For those of you who don't know what the single city challenge is, it is an option that you can set before you start a game. Now of course you could play a game uh, with the normal settings and just limit yourself to a single city. But selecting the single city challenge actually changes a couple of the mechanics of the game. First of all, it restricts all human players to a single city. It doesn't affect the AI, so they can continue to build as many cities as they want. And to be honest, I don't think the AI would be able to cope with only building a single city anyway. So apart from the initial settler that you begin with, it is impossible to get settlers any other way. We already know you can't capture settlers anyway, because if you capture somebody else's settlers, they become workers. You're unable to uh, produce settlers. You cannot get settlers via the um, Liberty cultural policy tree. And if you are playing as a civilization that have any other way of getting other cities, for example, Venice, who can get the um, Venetian merchants and use them to purchase city-states, you can't do that. Uh, I believe the same goes for Austria as well. So you're only ever going to get the uh, one settler. Now, you can still capture other cities, but what will happen is if you capture another city via combat, it will instantly get raised on the turn that you capture it. No matter how large its population, it will get destroyed. And that goes for any city type, uh, city type even city-states and original capital cities and holy cities. Cities that normally can't be raised get instantly destroyed. So, let's just have a little bit of a talk about the options that I'm running the game on at the moment. Um, we've gone for a standard game. It's all at standard pace. Uh, it's uh, It was a random map type, but it's obviously picked continents for us there because it tells me now. You can see the question mark, so it is random, but it's given us continents. Now, I'm still playing on King. I was toying with the idea of stepping things up to Emperor. Now, I've never attempted the single city challenge before this. Uh, I did have a couple of quick trial games just before recording this video. Just to test out a couple of different civilizations, a couple of different options and starting positions. I didn't really play any of them beyond turn 50. It was just to try and get a feel of things. Now, while I feel that possibly I could do it on Emperor, because I find that um, the King difficulty is fairly easy for me on most games. I find that um, having a single city is already going to be enough of a disadvantage, especially as I haven't really done this before. And your starting at your starting location can also really make a huge deal of difference. One of the games I started was on a uh, archipelago style map, and I had a small slither of land and lots of coastal tiles, so I had a great way of making massive amounts of food, but no real way to get any production or put anything else down. So, we're going to be playing as Venice. Um, one option that I have got uh, enabled here, which is something I only found recently, and I'm surprised. A lot of people always ask me about displaying yield icons. I know a lot of people play with these on because the information they give you is invaluable. But I actually find it quite messy, particularly when you have large parts of the map revealed. So I don't actually have that enabled. What I did find, however, in the game's options is there is, under the main game options, display yields for civilian units. And when you have that enabled, if you actually select a civilian unit, it displays all of the yield within the area that they're in. So we're going to make a start. We're going to pop Venice down. I think we will start on the hex that we're on. We've got double wheat, so we'll be able to grow nice and fast. We have a source of marble, and we have some wine so we don't have a massive number of luxury resources around now it does look like we're on the coast sadly we're not next to a river or a mountain which is a little bit of a pain that means we're going to struggle to get ourselves any um uh, observatories up and we're also not really going to be able to do an awful lot with extra production from a river which is a real pain but it's uh, not really worth moving because we don't know what we're going to run into. And of course, the last thing you want to do is get your settler killed by barbarians on the first turn because then you're screwed. So let's just quickly talk about some of the pros and cons that we will have with a single city. Well, firstly, let's look at the cons. You've only got one city. If it gets attacked and taken away from you, that's it. Game over. So you really need to defend it at all costs. Secondly, with no way to spread, we're only ever going to be able to work the tiles around our city. 
which means if we want to get other luxury resources, we're going to have to rely on trade or the generosity of city-states. And it also means we're limited to the resources such as science and uh, production that we can get from these tiles. Now, on the plus side, there are some advantages. Only having one city means we're not going to have to pay the additional science cost for uh, research, and we're not going to have to pay the additional culture cost for social policies, which you would normally have if you built extra cities. We're not going to have to worry about building roads or the maintenance cost associated with them because we won't have any cities to connect up. That's unless we actually decide just to build some roads to move troops around. So I'm just going to use my warrior to do a little bit of exploring. Uh, we do have to pick a science. I think what we're going to go um, straight into here is archery because I'd really like to get the temple of Artemis up and running. So Getting wonders is going to be absolutely paramount to the game as a single city because what we lack in resources from the land, we need to try and get back in resources from uh, wonders. Now, another advantage that you will have playing as a single city comes when you build your national wonders. You shouldn't ever be in a position where you're having to wait for... Like, say, for example, I want to build Oxford University. I'm not going to have to wait until I've built a university in every city because I only have one city to build a university in. So, why Venice? I was toying with the several different civilizations to play as, and I couldn't decide which one would be best for the single city challenge. Now, quite a lot of people uh, mentioned Venice, and I think a lot of people think that Venice is a good city or a good civilization to play as, because in a normal uh, normal game, they're designed around having a single city. Well, that isn't exactly true. Now we've met Vatican City, thank you very much. Now, the way that Venice works in a normal game is, yes, they cannot produce settlers and they cannot annex cities, but they can produce the Venetian Great Merchant. And that Venetian Great Merchant can actually go to a city-state in their borders and it can conduct a special type of mission which basically buys the city-state and that city-state then becomes yours as a puppeted city. You can also take city-states and other people's cities, of course, by conquest and capturing them, but they will still always be city-states. Now, Venice does have the advantage that it can actually purchase uh, units at puppeted cities. So there is an advantage to having them, but it's not designed to run with just a single city. However, what does make it important is the ability to have double the number of trade routes. That's Venice's thing. They get twice as many trade routes per era as anyone else. So let's get the monument up and running. Other civilizations that I did toy with, um, one was India. And we've already found Aluru, and that's fantastic, although it's too far away to work. Uh, one of the ideas I did toy with was, uh, was India. And the main reason for that is because one of India's special abilities is they only take... They only get half the amount of unhappiness from overcrowding, but they get double the amount of unhappiness from settling additional cities. So that wasn't ever going to be a problem because we weren't going to settle additional cities. And I thought it's good if you get a start that has a lack of... Uh, decent luxury resources and there's the ancient ruins that I've been looking for uh, it, it is good if you start with a lack of um, luxury resources because you won't get as much happiness from overcrowding and that is what we're going to have to do we have one city and we have to build that one city big now first thing I'm going to do is take that and see what we get we get some culture. That is very nice. We're going to go and spend that straight the way. Now, there's absolutely no point in taking liberty, really, in uh, in a single city game. Because one production in every city, well, we're only going to have one city. We're not going to get ourselves a settler, because we don't get settlers. We could get a Venetian merchant, but it's not going to be that useful. And a lot of the stuff is just really geared around expanding so it's kind of pointless so we're going to go straight into tradition which will help our main city grow all the faster so we're definitely going to take that um it would be nice if we could um so that's going to unlock the hanging gardens which we'd also like to try and get but there's no guarantee that that is going to work so let us keep scouting around now even though this is continents it almost looks like we are on an isolated start so we're going to have to do a fair bit of exploring to um find that out. I don't really want to annoy Vatican City by running through their lands, but I want to see if there's anything connected over on that side. 
That will annoy them if I cut through their territory, but we can it's worth it because we can now see that there's nothing out there, which is very interesting. So let's go and have a look over here. Now, I haven't decided what sort of victory type I am going to go for yet. And there we go. We have the archery. So let's decide what would the next best thing to be. Well, it would be quite good for us to get the wine hooked up and also, of course, the wheat. And, of course, the marble. So we've either got masonry or calendar, which we really want to um, work towards. So we could go for calendar, which would give us the stoneworks and the plantation. Or we could go into masonry. We're not going to be building the pyramids. Um, we could build the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Because we will be expending a lot of great persons as Venice. And we will have a source of marble. So that could be quite useful. And I think we're probably going to need that more than... We can get the stone moats anyway. Not too bothered about Stonehenge. I don't think I will be playing a particularly religious game uh, in this playthrough. Simply because I think the religion will be hard to spread and certainly hard to maintain. Uh, we could go into uh, pottery to try and get an early granary because we do have double wheat. But I think while we're still growing nicely, we're going to go into masonry and try and get there as quickly as we can. Now, one thing we are going to have to do is micromanage the city really carefully. And what we want to do at the moment more than anything is concentrate on growth. Now, the wheat is really good tiles to work. It's nice we've got that double wheat. It means we have a good source of food to grow. And we also have a decent amount of production. So we'll leave those two tiles. I'm quite happy with what it has chosen there. And we're going to continue to look around. We found another ancient ruins, which could be very useful for us. Let's bring these warriors back out of there because they're just going to annoy Vatican City. They can actually come over here and look east of Venice. Haven't found any barbarians yet. Of course, that doesn't mean that there aren't any around and they could spawn. A little bit disappointed I didn't start next to a river or a mountain, which is uh, not ideal. Got ourselves some gold. We found ourselves some tundra, but it looks like, again, we have found the absolute edge of the map. So let's go and have a look on in the other direction. One turn away from completing the monument. And there's the monument, so that'll help us with our culture growth. Just got to check over here. Yep, as suspected, that is the end tile. I think that is... Should be a coastal tile. Certainly looks like it. Yeah, must be. So we're going to head back this way. So what is our next production going to be? Well, we could go for a worker, but I think we're actually going to go straight into the Temple of Artemis. That is going to be an absolutely amazing wonder for us if we can get that. Luckily, it is one of those wonders that the AI doesn't seem to prioritise. Now, I was uh, going to mention the reason why I'd chosen the King difficulty as opposed to the... Uh, Emperor difficulty. I did try some of my trial games on Emperor just to see how things would go and it was 50-50 depending on the type of start that I got to be honest but the main thing is as you know when you actually play Civilization 5 on a higher difficulty all you're doing is giving the AI more of a head start. They get an advantage to things like science and production and their happiness and the player is always playing catch up but it's very very difficult for the player to play catch up when you only have a single city. And barbarians have now appeared. So it looks like we will have a job for our warriors after all. So this is the reason why I've decided to play it on King. I figured it was going to be enough of a challenge anyway. Because I hadn't done it before. And if I... I'd sooner do it on King and find it's really easy. And then try it again at another time on a higher difficulty level. Than go instantly in to Emperor and just screw the whole thing up. So... Most of the time, most people would go for legalism first, providing a free culture building in our first four cities, which is only really going to affect our first and only city, just so they can then go into landed elite and get the 10% growth. Well, there's no point growing too quickly at the moment because we don't have the happiness to sustain it. However, getting some early wonders on board would be ideal for us. So we're actually going to go for um, aristocracy so we can build our wonders a little bit faster. And that has shaved a few turns off the Temple of Artemis. I could shuffle some people around and try and get some more production on it but as we're going to grow in six turns anyway we'll have a another civilian to help us do that so that is fantastic let's go on to the next turn we're going to leave these barbarians being with our scout and actually move our warrior in behind now the scouts found the edge of the territory in this direction they're going to move down on this side to see what they can see 
Ah, and they've actually decided to come out of their camp and attack my uh, my scouts. That's very nice of them. So I'm going to fortify the scouts. Fortunately, the warrior can't get into the camp on the same turn. But these barbarians now have a choice. They can either attack my scouts again or they can withdraw back into their camp to defend it. And they've taken the wiser option of withdrawing back into their camp. So I'm going to attack them. I will leave the scouts for a turn to heal up because I'd sooner have them at full health before they go out. We now have mining. Not too much use to us at the moment anyway, but it means we can go straight into masonry. Uh, you guys can continue to attack. You should have this one quite easily under control. Okay, our scouts are at full health, so they can move off again on the next turn. And would you know it, we have another lot of them that have appeared. Well, this is planes and this is planes, so let us go for uh, shock, because we are in open terrain. And we're going to go in and clear the camp. And I think we can safely just move the scouts away at this point. On to the next turn. One turn until Venice grows. 21 turns until the Temple of Artemis. Those guys are attacking us just as expected. We are very low health at the moment. But I think if we fortify until healed, we may just be able to fend them off. Hopefully we can anyway. Um, let's start moving down here. So here's some incense that we will never be able to get. Because it is one, two, three, one tile outside of the radius that we can reach. We've got another civilian here in Venice, which has increased the production rate slightly. Now, we only have food plus two. Uh, what are we working? That one, that one. And, oh, we've, we've expanded to another wheat. We've actually got triple wheat. Triple wheat is very nice. Unfortunately, we won't ever be able to get the spices either. Now, that's not technically true. We could actually get ourselves a great general, and we can use the great general's citadel to expand our borders. And borders will grow beyond four turns. I mean, we can never work this tile, but our borders could grow to it, and we could improve it and get the happiness and be able to trade it. Same goes for these spices. Our borders could, and probably will, expand this far, and we will be able to get the spices, even though we'll never be able to work the tile. You guys are going to continue to heal up simply because those guys are a bit of a pain. And we're going to continue to have a look around, see if we can find any more ancient ruins. Because they are a real help early on in the game. Yes, they have decided to come back in and attack, which was a little bit annoying. We've taken some more damage there, but so have they. So we're going to stay fortified. It would have been nice to get up onto the hill, um, but we're not going to be able to... Um, to do that on this turn. So I think we will just stay there and let them keep throwing themselves at us. Now, do we go south or do we go east? I think we're going to go south. Right, we found a river. And this is quite a big piece of a continent here. So I don't think we are... Well, we're a little bit isolated. But we're only connected to the mainland by these sort of three, three tile wide passage here. Which is good. Unfortunately, we don't have any sources of fish or any sea resources either, which is really annoying. Because some sea tiles are absolutely excellent to work for growth. But it is very much a mixed bag. As I said, I did have one game before where I started on an archipelago map. And I had lots of sea tiles and sea resources. And food really wasn't a problem, but everything else was. That brute is almost dead. He is bound to uh, die on the next turn. I'm not going to attack because I'll probably die in the process. So we'll let them attack me. Obviously, you don't get your defensive bonus if you're attacking. And I will heal in between turns. So let's just go to the north. And we have now found uh, Mount Kalash, which is great because that will give us a bit of extra happiness as well. Another city-state over there, so we're just going to go over and tag his borders, get some free gold. And I suppose what I should really be doing is pledging to protect these city-states. So let's go back down here to Vatican City. Pledge to protect them. There shouldn't be any issue with doing that. We can safely take out this barbarian now, so we should do that. And then we'll heal these warriors up. There we go. And let's keep looking around with our scout. There we go. We have found Belgrade. And we are not the first people to meet them. Because they've only given us 15 gold here. Um, so there are other people around. We will pledge to protect them. That is fine. Uh, we have another social policy. So we could put some in honour and help us fight the barbarians. And, and fight in general. And help us to get great generals more quickly that might be something we do later on but we're going to take legalism so we can get into landed elite more quickly 
So let's go on to the next turn. So as you can see, already we are falling behind on science, but that's because I'm I'm beelining particular things up in the tree. I'm not going for the easiest of things. So let's have a quick look here. We found some barbarians south of Belgrade. I'd prefer not to have to deal with them right away, so let's continue to scout around. Our warriors have been upgraded. I think giving them double shock isn't a bad idea, and I'm going to bring them back to the city so they can heal up more quickly. Let's go on to the next turn. So as you can see, we're at turn 26. We're already well at the bottom of the score. But that doesn't mean to say that things won't improve. So it looks like this could be a relatively large continent. There is a fairly decent sized chunk of the land that we are on that seems a little bit isolated. So we have a little bit of an isolated start, though it's not a great one. Okay, our warriors have safely arrived in Venice. We have now met the Byzantium. Now, Theodora can be quite aggressive, so hopefully she won't be. Um, unfortunately, we can't wipe these barbarians out out so i'm just going to go on to defensive and see what they do it would be nice if i could kill them but it's very unlikely that's going to happen you guys are just going to heal up we're one turn away from masonry and we've also met the ottomans who also can be quite hostile so this is what i was saying it really does depend on the star and who you end up with so we've researched masonry i think we definitely now need to get into pottery so we can get the granary up and running and also start walk, uh, working towards calendar so we can get the wines up now these guys actually moved up onto the hill which is quite interesting so we're not going to bother trying to uh, trying to attack them i'm going to move over this way so i don't get caught in the zone of control of the barbarian and lose one movement Found some copper. You want to give me one gold per turn for an embassy. I don't have a problem with that. Well, I have a little bit of a problem with it in the fact that you'll now know where my capital is and he could decide to attack. So we will have to build some military units. That is definitely going to be a concern. And it's one of the things where I usually lack and fall behind on this game is I have a habit of not building military units. And that could be really bad for me because if the AI detects that I have a really weak army and we've also found indonesia as well if the ai detects i have a really weak army they could be very very inclined to attempt to attack me and we don't want that to happen so we have met you that is fantastic i'm very happy for you we've discovered another barbarian encampment not sure where we discovered a barbarian oh, it's miles away I'm not bothered about that so let us continue to have a look around here so yes, we are on this little sort of large peninsula over here, which is nice. Warriors have healed up already, which is fantastic. They may as well stay in the capital for now. Uh, don't really have anything else for them to do. Move them out when we need to buy a new unit. You want to give me one gold per turn for embassy. So this is where Venice is going to come into its own. The thing we need to do with Venice more than anything is trade. It's actually trade that's going to allow us to get the city-states on side, which is going to mean we can get all of the extra resources that the city-states are going to give to us. And having a lot of money will mean we can panic buy units and buildings because obviously you can't buy wonders. So we're going to have to spend a lot of our produ production time uh, actually building the wonders which means we can actually use gold to purchase the rest of the buildings so we can see indonesia already has two cities in fact we're on turn 34 so i would expect that by now most of the ai civilizations are on to their second city uh, we've now researched pottery we're going to continue to scout around because that's what scouts do looks like indonesia have got a nice city there they've got double sugar they're next to an oasis they're coastal. They are on a hill, which is a bit weird. Uh, but they've got a good river there and floodplains as well. I hate them. That's the start I would have wanted. Um, it's a little bit unfair. Let us go into calendar then at this point and go on to the next turn. One turn until Venice grows. Two turns away from the Temple of Artemis. So Venice has grown. We're going to go over to Venice. 44 turns now until it grows because the food situation is getting a little bit dire, but that will be resolved once the Temple of Artemis gets up and running. We're again working the best tiles that we can be, whether we work the marble or the wine, we're only going to get one food, one production and two gold. Uh, any other tile will just give us one one, so we're still working the best tiles that we can be. 
So let's continue using our scouts. Have a look. We found another city-state, which no doubt has already been um, discovered by the Indonesians. I'd be very surprised if it has not. We have completed the Temple of Artemis, which is fantastic. It means we get 10% growth in all cities, even though we only have one. And we will get some extra production when building ranged units. And we will need to get a few archers up and running. Yes, Lahasa has been found before, so most likely was the Indonesians. And another city state up here. Glad I decided to go north. So we have a, another production. Now I'm very tempted here just to go straight into the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. See if we can't get that first. Especially given the fact that we do have our extra production coming from our social policies. So let's go and have a look up here. And we have found Zurich. In fact we're actually the first people to meet Zurich. Which is really nice. Let's see and try and discover as much of the coastline as possible we are going to need to get a worker up and running at some point and i think i might prioritize uh purchasing a worker with some of the money that we have coming in obviously there's going to be quite a few turns here where not an awful lot is going on this is something that you will notice with a single city challenge because you only have a single city you often don't have a lot of micromanaging to do Belgrade desires jewellery. We've got another social policy, so let's just move down here. We are going to take landed elite, so let's have a look at the situation of things. So the Temple of Artemis did help. We went up from um, 44 turns to growth up to 19. Well, it was probably 21 because we've had two turns since then. So we're actually going to go for the landed elite, which will give us another 10% growth and plus two food in the capital. We're now down to eight turns for growth, which is fantastic. Let's have a little look in here. We're still working the best tiles that we can be. Now, a worker is 310 gold. We are a little bit short. We could get a shrine up and running, but I don't think that is a priority. Uh, one thing I have noticed in uh, a few of the games that I did trial out is that it's very, very easy to get all of the buildings built. And then you have a lot of time where you have nothing left to build. So let's hope we can manage that. So we have got ourselves some barbarians to deal with. Lucky for them, they're not going to have anything to pillage because I don't have anything for them to pillage. But I'm going to go and move my warriors up on this. Oh, double barbarians. That's nice. I wonder if the camp has respawned up there. Certainly worth going to have a look if it has. We might be able to go up there and farm it. Belgrade so is also under attack as well. Uh, Belgrade is over. Well, we already saw that they were having some problems with barbarians, so that's hardly surprising. So let's go right ahead and try and kick the crap out of these guys. Unfortunately, I've got double shock, and they're now in rough terrain. But always one of those things. They are nearly dead. Might get another promotion for these guys, or at least halfway to another promotion. So what should we go for now? I think we should go for writing and get ourselves a library, because we're going to get very, very behind on science. If we look at the demographics, uh, we're actually not the worst in science, to be honest, which really surprises me. Um, apparently Byzantium don't have any science. That doesn't seem right. Um, we're not doing as bad as I thought we would. We have the lowest happiness and the least number of soldiers. But apart from that, we're not doing terrible. Uh, but that does highlight uh, an issue there. We do need to get ourselves some more military units. So we're going to continue to explore around before one of the AI decides that we are weak and squishy and they want to declare war on us because that will mess things up for us rather nicely. So you're still within range of the city. I'm just going to get the city to bombard you. And I'm going to get this guy to come out and have a look and see if we can find where those other guys have gone. Might be that the uh, Byzantines have finished them off. And we now have archers down here to deal with as well. Isn't that fantastic? Ah, it might be this barbarian camp down here. So we'll have to go and consider clearing that. We will have a quick look over here and just make sure that there are no more camps. We've got a barbarian camp down here, which we'll try and give a fairly wide berth as we go and meet this other city-state over here. So we've already got an unmet player entering the classical era. And we have met Banza Congo, who we will also pledge to protect, because why not? Uh, we will leave you there this turn, and then we can jump you through on the next turn. We'll just keep shooting these guys with the city where we can. Keep our 
warriors out of range so they don't get uh, don't get taken out. Here come the Ottomans. Maybe the Ottomans will finish them off. Certainly have attacked the Ottomans. There's that other group. I knew there was one up there somewhere. I won't be able to attack them this turn, but we can certainly move into the forest to help deal with them later. Let's start trying to finish these guys off. I am helping the Ottomans out a little bit here by doing this. Let's not forget that uh, scout that I put on to... Uh... Ah, well, that didn't help much, did it? We'll have to get out of that little corner on the next turn and hopefully avoid that barbarian camp. So, the archers are firing at the Ottomans. Ottomans didn't even retaliate, which is quite strange. So, let's get you guys out of there. Uh, we should be able to finish those guys off. Which we didn't quite manage to do, strangely enough. Let's attack you guys. Not too bad. And what I want to do is really take my warriors somewhere and try and wipe out some of these barbarian encampments. There is one down there which I think we need to deal with. It's where most of these barbarians are coming from. Okay, we're just going to wipe you guys straight out. Okay, that's one lot of barbarians dealt with. And we're going to wipe you out as well. Unit needs orders. Yes, we do have a barbarian encampment there, don't we? Don't really want to have to cut through um, Mbanza Congo's borders, so we're going to skirt around it. I'll try and keep our scout alive for as long as possible. As you'll notice, I'm uh, pretty much micromanaging the scout on this particular game. Uh, we have the most money, which is nice. Yeah, I'm micromanaging the scout because I want to try and find as many city-states as possible. It's also important, of course, that we do find all of the other civilizations as early as possible as well. Because the idea of finding the other civilizations means if they have a technology that we don't, we actually research it faster. Now, you can see our borders have expanded wildly in this direction. We have one, two, three, four. So we have a wine tile that we can't work, but we can actually get a worker to um, improve it. And that would then allow us to trade the wine. So, speaking of worker, let us go and purchase one. And we could do with an archer, really, but the worker is going to be slightly more valuable for us at this point. I'm going to bring this warrior back to the city to heal. We're not at the bottom of the scoreboard anymore, you'll notice. We've already moved up to position number four. As our scouts get attacked by their barbarians. And I was just going to say, oh, they've left their camp unattended and I can just run in and take it. But they've just spawned another unit. I'm going to fortify until heal because I'm on a hill. So I'm going to have the advantage there unless they attack me with both units, which would be unfortunate. So what are we going to go for next? We've got writing, so we can at least start a library. I don't think we're going to get the Great Library built. The Great Library is a wonder that the AI always makes a beeline for, so I'm not even going to bother wasting any production trying to get the Great Library. As nice as it would be to have, I just don't think it is realistically possible. Now, we don't seem to have many animals around, but we should get animal husbandry as early as we can mainly for the caravans we have got a couple of city states that we can trade with so that is what we are going to do this worker is going to go and upgrade something now we're not short of happiness at the moment although that won't be the case for long so i think what we're actually going to do is we will upgrade one of the wheats first because we're already working the wheats then we'll possibly get the marble for the additional happiness and um, we can get ourselves a stoneworks up and running as well, which would be quite useful. Five turns away from the uh, mausoleum of Halicarnassus, which is nice. I think we're on track for getting that. Four turns remaining now. Uh, Venice has grown again. What tiles are we working? Yeah, we're now working the wine as well. So I don't disagree with that choice. We'll leave that as is. Uh, you're going to heal up before we send you off probably to your death. And already Theodora of the Byzantium wants a declaration of friendship, which is strange because we're neutral, but let's go for that. We want to stay as friendly with as many civilizations as possible. We don't want to end up getting into trouble. Let us go. Let's have a quick look what's going on down here. Almost looks like they're trying to flank us. We'll stay there for the turn, see what they attempt to do. 
Yeah, they haven't tried to attack us. We do have more barbarians down here, of course. They're bound to be coming from this camp. So we are going to be going down there and trying to wipe that out as soon as possible. Uh, we do need an archer, but an archer is going to cost us 140 gold. So we can't do that just yet. We're going to move up here towards Lahasra a little bit more. So if those warriors, those barbarians want to come up and bother us, they're going to take some fire from Lahasa. And Banza Khan goes under attack. Although I have now given the uh, barbarians the high ground, which I really didn't want to do, but there isn't an awful lot I can do about that right now. So let's continue to try and take these guys out. My uh, warriors are healing up nicely. I will put them on there just so they can deal with them. So once again, we've now finished the animal husbandry. We don't really have anywhere we can build a camp, so that is a little bit pointless. Uh, we don't have a city next to a river, which means we won't be able to get a water mill up and running. I guess getting sailing up and running would be quite good for us playing as uh, Venice, although... We don't have anything that's worth using a work boat on. We could certainly build cargo ships and get some triremes out there, which will help us in finding some more of the other city-states and the other civilizations. So we're going to ignore those barbarians for now and just attempt to stay alive and go around and have a look, see what we can find. We've still got one, two, three, four different civilizations left to find. We have now completed the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, which makes me very happy. Uh, we can take a shot at these guys, which we certainly will do. And we can also go in there and ruffle stomp what's left of them with our warriors. Down they go. We will heal up a little bit, then we'll go down and try and deal with that camp. So, Venice has completed its production. Now, like I said, I could go for the Great Library, but I think it is going to be a waste of time. I'm absolutely convinced that should I try and go for the Great Library, I will be beaten to it. So, I'm going to queue up an archer first, just so we have a little bit more of an army, because at the moment we've got absolutely nothing. And then I am going to add... A normal library to the queue and then probably the granary after that unless anything changes in the meantime. I've learnt my lesson before because there's been so many times where I've gone, okay, I'm going to go for the Great Library. And then I'm like two or three turns away from completing it and somebody else beats me to it. The AI almost always rushes straight into the um, technology tree needed to unlock the Great Library and tries to build it first. So it would be very, very foolish of me to try and get that. We have now connected up this wheat, which gives us an extra source of food. So let's go up here and get ourselves an extra production from the marble. That will certainly help us to um, build our units and buildings more quickly. It also doubles the amount of gold we get from that tile as well, which is more than useful. So our borders are starting to spread. It is ignoring some of the water tiles because they're not all that useful right now, but... Uh, Okay, we found some more tundra. We found uh, one of Byzantium's cities down here. Now, I want you guys to heal up, so we'll continue doing that, and then hopefully go and take that camp out. We have to be very careful where we cross, or we'll end up having to attack them over a river, which we really don't want to have to do. I've actually got 12 faith. I must have got that from a ruin, because I've got no idea where we got it from. Okay, we're not fully healed, but we should be able to take these guys out. Can't go around this way. Ah, we've actually found uh, King Solomon's Mines. It's a shame we can't work that. Six production, that is a great wonder. Um, yeah, that is a shame. At least, of course, we, we, we get the happiness for finding it, which isn't a bad thing. So someone has founded a Pantheon. Okay, I think what I'm going to do with these guys is I'm going to start moving them back up in this direction. Now, our gold per turn with the Ottomans has now ended uh, because that deal has run its course, which is a little bit of a shame. Oh, look, here is the Byzantines with a settler, which is a little bit annoying. Um, let's go ahead and start to pound on this camp if we want, mainly because we actually want the camp taken out. And we've got to remember, of course, barbarians cannot heal, so I can always have a couple of hits and then get my guys to safety, let them recover a little bit. There we go, we've got our archer. Eight turns until we get our library, then we might be able to research some technologies a little bit faster. I've got a feeling that Byzantium is going to pop their city down here somewhere, which is a little bit annoying, which means they'll probably, yeah, they'll probably pop it here. And end up getting the spices and the stone. What I'd like to do, actually, 
and, and this may be controversial, but what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to buy that tile just to try and stop them settling on any of these three tiles here. Well, they couldn't have settled on that one anyway, but it will stop them settling here or here, which would have been stupid for them to do anyway, but I want to try and keep them as much at bay as possible, so... Hopefully that will work. They've got some archers over there now, which is going to be really problematic. So what I'm going to do is withdraw. Now I'm actually going to stay there and just heal up and bring my archers down to try and uh, try and deal with them from afar. On to the next turn. Yeah, and of course the archers are going to fire at my warriors. So, going to move my archers down. And we'll go on to the next turn. I'm hoping my warriors do survive. They are fortified, so of course they are healing per turn. And which means I can now... Right, we've discovered sailing. I've still got the forest in the way, which the jungle in the way, which means I can't actually hit them from there. So, I'm going to have to move up a little bit. Can't shoot them on this turn, which is a bit of a shame. So we now have to choose what tech we are going to go for. We could go for optics. The lighthouse would give us an extra food from coast and ocean tiles. Uh, we don't have any sea resources, so it wouldn't really give us any additional production. The lighthouse could be useful for the great merchant points, although we're not really going to have a navy. Again, the great lighthouse tends to be a wonder that a lot of the AI does beeline for, but we could certainly give it a go. Um, Statue of Zeus could be useful as well, um, but although we're not directly going to be attacking cities, so that isn't going to be our major issue. Uh, I think we're going to go for optics, just to get us into the classical era and we can start catching up with a few people. Uh, we'll have one more turn and then we'll call it a video, just because I'm interested to see what's going to happen down here with these barbarians. Hopefully I won't lose a unit. I'm also interested to see exactly what Byzantium think they're up to over here. The Great Library has been built in a land far away, just as I expected, so if I'd have built the Great Library, or tried to build the Great Library, I would have lost it by now. Um, I'm going to go directly for the... Actually, I think we're just going to try and weaken out the archers first, because the archers aren't exactly... Uh, these brutes are just sort of sitting here in the camp, so we'll try and weaken out the archers. They're doing the most damage. So do we go for monarchy, which would give us uh, plus one gold and minus one unhappiness for every two citizens in the city? That could be useful. Oligarchy probably isn't all that much point right now because I don't have that many military units. And the military units I do have are out doing stuff. So we're going to go for monarchy. Uh, that puts us up from seven to ten um, happiness and gave us a little bit of extra gold there as well. Uh, worker has now got that marble connected up. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to work on the wheat simply because we are right next to it. Connecting the wheat up will allow us to grow a little bit more quickly because we're up to six, um, six population. And what you've got to remember as well is that population is happiness. Uh, sorry, population is science. So the more people you have, the more science per turn you get. You actually get one science per turn per member of population. So growing the city is actually really, really useful. If we just have a look in Venice because I just want to see what tiles we're working. Uh, again, we seem to be working the sensible tiles. Priorities after that are getting at least one of the wines connected up possibly both of them so we've got one for trade and getting the horses connected up as well maybe we can get a stable going and get a little bit of production in there which could be quite useful so that's pretty much all i can do on this turn and therefore all i can do on this video i think so far things are going quite well we've actually managed to get up to second in the scores even though we only have a single city and you can almost almost guarantee that we are the only nation that has a single city at the moment um we have the least amount of food, which is really, really strange. And we have the weakest army, which is unsurprising. Uh, but we are second in literacy somehow. We were bottom or near bottom earlier, and we've managed to bring that around. We've increased our approval. Um, we're actually making quite a bit of money as well. So things aren't going too bad at this point. Now, like I said, I don't know what victory type I'm going to go for at the moment, so there's still everything to play for, but we will have to talk about that in another video. So thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, goodbye for now.